Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unusor Education. Um, today I would like to present you an interesting probabilistic problem. Um, and let me just uh, spend a couple of words about the history of this problem. Um, I was uh, preparing some lecture on statistics, in particular statistics um, and correlation between statistically defined um, random variables, experimental data. And I was trying to find an example when two um, random variables are dependent on each other um, and yet their covariance or correlation coefficient uh, is equal to zero. And I was trying to do it in a very simple case with, with uh, random variables taking only two different values. And every time I came to strange results that variable cannot actually have two different values it should have only one value a constant basically being a constant and um, i was surprised tried it a couple of times and had exactly the same result so then i went back to uh, the pure theory of probabilities and thought that maybe there is there is basically some theorem which can be proven this way and uh, indeed I was able actually to, to prove this and I'm going to present it to you as a problem, basically. Um, now, as usually I'm trying to encourage you to solve problems just by yourself first. So I do recommend you to go to unizor.com to this particular lecture. It's in probabilities and random variables, problem number seven. And um, there is a problem basically is explained and then there is a solution and don't pay attention to solution first try to solve it if you can't then then obviously go to solutions etc all right and then listen to my lecture and after that when you finish all that just open the new sheet of paper and try to do everything just by yourself it's a very good exercise all right so now let me just present you a pure problem let's consider you have two random variables and I was trying to actually find as simple variables as possible. So my random variables C takes values uh, A and B. And my variable eta, random variable eta, takes values uh, C and D. Now, we were talking about their dependence or independence, which means we have to really get involved in their mutual probabilities of taking certain values at the same time, right? Um, now, I put it in a table, so my C and D would be the values of eta, and um, my A and B would be the values of um, C and I have probabilities P, Q, U, V as mutual probabilities, which means the probability of C, this is C and this is and this is eta. The probability of C to take A and eta to take C at the same time is P. That's their mutual probabilities. And all other pairs, like probabilities of uh, C to take B and eta to take D is V, right? Now, obviously, P plus Q plus U plus V is equal to 1 because they um, completely encompass the whole uh, set of all possible elementary events. And each elementary event is obviously simultaneous taking a value for C, one of these two, and for eta. Okay, so that's what we have. Now, what's given is that their covariance, or correlation coefficient, which is the same thing, is equal to zero. Okay, so covariance is equal to zero. Now, what I have to prove is, basically, that there are no non-trivial random variables which are, at the same time, dependent on each other but still have the covariance is equal to zero. Now, if it's independent, we know that for independent random variables, covariance always equals to zero. Now, since I was trying to find dependent ones, 
Well, in this particular case, when only two values are available for each of these two random variables, the answer actually is there is none. There are no uh, dependent, non-trivial dependent, and I'll explain what non-trivial means. There are no non-trivial dependent variables which take only two values each with such a covariance equal to zero. Now, what I mean non-trivial? Okay, the trivial case is when a is equal to b or c is equal to d and these are actually constants. So it's not really like a random variable. So if we, in the very beginning, consider the case when a is not equal to b and c is not equal to d, then the only possibility for this to be true is independence between um, C and, and eta. And that's what I'm going to assume. So assume that A is not equal to B and C is not equal to D. These two um, variable, uh, random variables are non-constant, non basically. So they have more than one value of, with, with different probabilities. Okay. All right. So I have to prove that they are independent of each other. Now, to prove independency, let me just... Um, spend a couple of minutes about to talk about dependent or independent. Now you remember that independent events, for instance, event A and B, they are independent if conditional probability of A under condition that B occurred is equal to unconditional. Now what is this? This is actually probability of A and B at the same time occurring divided by probability of b. This is basically what it is. Because if you remember, if you have, this is um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the sample space that where all the elementary events are represented. This is a and this is b. What I'm saying is, this is a, this is b, and this is a, B, when both occur at the same time, right? So, A, the, well, geometrically, the area of A, B relates to the area of B exactly the same way as area of A relates to an entire space. That's what basically independence means. All right, which, which means from this that P of A B equals P of A times P of B, right? If this, in the conditional probability is this. Now, if we're talking about random variables, which take certain discrete values, then absolutely the same way if and another variable takes one of its values, so this simultaneous probability is equal to product of their corresponding probabilities, where xi is one of the values which c can take, and yj is one of the values with et, which eta think takes, take, takes. So if this probability of simultaneous taking these two is equal to the product, for any values x, i, and y, j, then um, the uh, variables c and eta are independent. And as a follow-up follow from here, uh, it was very easy to prove the following, that expectation of their product is equal to product of their expectation. Now, um, for those who have problems with all this, I do recommend you to go back to the lectures about conditional probabilities and mathematical expectation uh, in the course and uh, on Unizor, and everything is explained in all the details. So I'll just use it as given. And what it means actually in this particular case, if you remember, the covariance is defined as a difference between these two values. So if covariance is equal to zero, then this is an equality which is given for R random variables, which I am going to write on the top instead of this as given. Okay, so we have that expectation of 
c times eta is equal expectation of c times expectation of eta that's given and from this particular equality I have to derive independence between xi and eta. So if they are independent, then this is true. But if this is true, is independence the only case? Well, apparently, if my, my uh, random variable take only two values, and they are different values, if that's the case, then yes, the answer is that from this, follows the independence. And that's what I'm going to prove. And that's what I'm asking actually to prove first, you by yourself. All right, so let me just go into this. What is um, expectation of xi times eta? Well, xi times eta can take values ac with a probability p, or ad with a probability q, or BC with a probability U, or BD with a probability V, right? So we know all the possible values for this product, and we know all the probabilities, which means on the left I will have ACP plus ADQ plus BCU uh, plus BDV. That's on the left. Now, and I know that this is equal to this product. All right, what's the probability of C? Well, C can take values A and B. So, what is the probability to take the value A? Well, the value A can actually be broken down into two variations. Value A and eta is equal to c, and we know this probability, value a with the value uh, of eta d, and this is this probability. So, a would, uh, would, would occur with the probability of p plus q, because there are no other variations. So, the probability of a is p plus q, or random variable C can take value B and the probability will be obviously U plus, uh, U plus V. That's my expectation of C. What's the expectation of eta? It can take value C or D. C will take in two cases with the probabilities P and U so we have to add them up. So multiply by C times p plus q and uh, d plus d times uh, sorry not p plus q but p plus u p plus u d is q plus v so that's what we have as given basically and again, from this, I have to derive independence between C and eta. All right, now, here is what um, I'm going to do to basically speed up the whole process. I'm not going to go through all the opening the parentheses, multiplication, blah, blah, blah. I know the answer because I did it before and I want to save my time as a lecture. However, what I would like you to do, whenever you will, after listening to this lecture, you will do it yourself, and that's, I, I do hope you will do it. You will basically do all the calculations just by yourself, completely, without any kind of shortcuts. So I will make a shortcut because I know the answer. So what I did is the following. You see, if you will multiply this by this, and then this by this, and then multiply this by this. You will have something like, let's say, a p times c times p, so p will be its square. It will be four different terms, like a, p, c, and b. In every term which we are adding together will be four multipliers. Here we have only three multipliers. So the idea which came to my mind was, why don't we multiply the left part by this, which is equal to one, 
but it gives me extra p, p square or q square or something like this. So without actually uh, changing the equality, if I multiply the left part by 1, it doesn't change anything. But if I do that and again open all the parentheses, etc., etc., I will have lots of things which are cancelling out. And whatever is left can be grouped together and here is my answer. I was actually quite delighted whenever it happened. So from this, if I multiply the left part by 1, which doesn't change it, which means still equality will be, open all parentheses, uh, cancel out whatever cancelable, and then group together things, I will get this. And this is quite remarkable, actually. I mean, I really loved it when I, when I saw it. It was very interesting. Well, first of all, obviously it can be equal to 0 if a is equal to b and, uh, and c is, or, or c is equal to d. But we have agreed in the very beginning that our random variables are not that trivial. So a and b are different values. c and d are different values. Otherwise, they are not really random variables, but constants. So, from this... I can only derive that p v minus q u equals to zero, right? That's the only way. And now, what I'm saying right now is that from this follows independence. And that's what I'm going to prove. And this is another very interesting piece. Well, actually, I will do instead of this. I will do equality, right? That's the same thing. So, basically, from this, we have derived that this is given. Well, not exactly given, but straightforward derivation, all right? So, we can consider this as a true statement. But I would like to prove independence. Now, let's think about what is independence. Well, as I told you before, okay, you know what, let me just write it on the top so I have room for everything else. So I have P V equals Q U. By the way, for those who remember matrices and uh, determinant, P V minus U Q is the determinant of this matrix. But that's another story. All right, so this is something which we have basically derived from whatever is given. Now, let's think about what is independence. All right, now, as I said before, independence means that the probability of C taking some value X I uh, and uh, eta equal one of its values is equal to the product of their probabilities that's what it means to be independent for any value xi from whatever x can take and from any value yj whatever eta can take so for any pair now, in our case, well, let's just go into our case. Now, xi, well, xi is either a or b, right? So, let's just make an example. So, probability of c is equal to a and a is equal to, let's say, c, for instance, should be equal to the probability of c is equal to a times probability of a to taking the value of c, right? Now, what is this? Well, probability of a, uh, uh, c for uh, taking a and a to taking c is p. So, this is p. Probability of c is uh, taking a is basically p plus q. And probability of a to taking c is p plus u. So I have to prove this for A and C. 
and then actually similar um, results for uh, all others. All right. Now, what is this? So I have to prove that p is equal p square plus p q plus uh, p u plus q u, right? I have to prove that. However, since I know this, I can change this to this. Now I can um, cancel by p, and I will have 1 is equal p plus q plus u plus v, which is something which is already proven thing. So how can I prove this? Well, I start with this, multiplied by p. It's irreversible, right? I start with something which is true. So this is true, and this is true. So I start with a true statement, multiply by p, give this, change this using this to qu, and the result would be my equation, whatever I have to prove. Which means this is true, this is true, and this is true. Now that's for a and c, but similarly, instead of multiplying this by p, I can multiply it by Q or by U or by V and it will be exactly the same similar thing. So it will always be this type of proof for any pair. In this case it's a pair AC but it can be pair AD or BC etc. any other pair. So we see that this is provable based on this. Which means again if this is true then our random variables are independent. Let me just repeat what we have just proven. That in a non-trivial case, if you have only random variables which take two values, only two values, no more than that, then covariance is equal to zero actually implies, which means from this follows, independence between these two. And my attempt to find dependent random variables which take only two different uh, values always failed and that's the explanation why it failed now this is uh, a probabilistic uh, problem and, uh, and, and, and obviously um, the fact that I have proven this particular theorem indicates that I cannot find any practical numbers a b c and g and whatever numbers are here which would result in covariance equal to zero so if i want to some in, uh, some dependent variables and i will design whatever the dependency between them is i will not have covariance zero or if i want covariance zero then inevitably my either a and b should be equal or c and d should be equal or the dependency would not exist. Okay, that's it for today. I recommend you again to go through all the calculations and come up with this, which is my kind of result of lots of calculations. Go and do it yourself and come up with this just by yourself. Very, very strong recommendation. That's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.